Hey, I'm Fuba Gaming, and I play games on unconventional ways, like the German friends. Oh, no, no, that wasn't a joke. We are going to be playing as German occupied France today. Probably the most forbidden strategy. How is it even playable when your country no longer exists? That is the question. And if you're not already aware, this is Hearts of Iron 4, the game where you play a nation in the 1930s and 40s, the most turbulent era of history. Spoiler, it's World War II. And I will show you the most disliked path for France for many different reasons. And I will show you about three or four exploits that come with it to make it somewhat playable. Somewhat, let's not go too far. Anyway, start of the game. You know how it goes. We merge up the fleet. We merge up the Air Force, apart from on the carriers. Shift, left click, get rid of those. And then finally, we've got our army. And I'm just going to control click them to alter this location. Research is the standard. You always want to work on your economy. But today, something a little bit different, because now we're going to focus on motorized, potentially to mechanize. To do that, we need artillery, though. Artillery with mechanized? How does that work? Oh, you'll see. Civilian factories. Now, this is going to be tricky, because where do we build if our nation ceases to exist? That is a very good question. So, Syria, very likely to join Free France. Next up, North Africa, the least likely to join Free France. Then we have West Africa and Central Africa, very likely to join Free France. We also have Madagascar, more likely to lean towards Vichy France. And finally, we have Indochina, which is more likely to lean towards Vichy France. So Vichy bad, Free France good. And also this island here that always is ours, but unfortunately there's no building slots here, so you can't build anything. So skip that. So Syria, we're going to build all our buildings here. Then... Central Africa and West Africa. Unfortunately, not a lot of building slots down here, but we'll make do with them. And as we expand towards concentrated or dispersed, we get more building slots so we can expand them. Eventually to have to build inside locations like here. Areas we won't control, but we will control them kind of later on. Okay, here's the spicy stuff. We're going to need a little bit of AA. We'll put two into there. Support equipment's always worthwhile. We'll put two into there. Tanks, unfortunately, not needed. And we are going to need some trucks. And the rest of it will go into guns and then even more so artillery and ships i know the guys out there you're dying i know navy lovers i'm so sorry the convoys national focus time we are going to go down and revive the national block on top of it off we are going to go to the international market and sell a bunch of stuff yes let's sell those convoys at maximum price select our entire army too and convert them to the small army also don't forget about building local autonomy and then maxing out garrisons because this will build the most amount of compliance in these regions which we'll later come back to to take advantage of oh no we're not done yet we're selling more stuff on the market and in this case let's sell all those trains we'll sell the rest of those guns and we got trucks and trains and whatnot why isn't there a button to send all select all send all why doesn't that exist Fifty thousand mile points yes well actually it's not my points. it's economic surplus points which can be used to add to construction and look the swiss want to buy guns and so do the other nations and oh it's the czechoslovakians i wonder if that'll come in handy oh look at all these guns sell 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 buy 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 of course the end result of this is more construction for us which is beneficial but i don't want to have to click this pop up over and over again so i'm just going to click this for now anyway five speed off we go and to top it off do you know what i've suddenly had a change of heart i'm actually going to sell and destroy all my planes and we're going to sell everything. Everything marked as the highest price. Sell, sell, sell. So the exploit here is at the very start of the game, the AI lacks a lot of equipment. And if you're either not aligned or in the allies, or a democratic nation in this case, everyone has access to your market and everyone's willing to buy off you. So in this case, if you sell things that they've got a deficit of, they're more likely to take it off you. And in this circumstance, they are willing to take it off us. And in that case, we get to sell lots of stuff and we get lots of economic surplus, which results in more construction power. And we need construction power because as you can see, we're building in regions of the world that are not as developed. Thanks, France. You could have developed those colonies, but you chose not to. Bad France. The one division trick. Have you guys ever heard of it? You delete the entire army and have one division, then you exercise it indefinitely. It gains you a little bit of XP. No, it's no near as effective as it used to be, but it does give you some experience. Check that out. 0.01 per day. Look at all that XP. Wow, that's worth it, right? It makes more sense when you expand this division, make it bigger. We'll show and we'll come back to this. We've revived the national block, but unfortunately, we're not going to protest the Rhineland because the Rhineland is rightfully German, right? Next up, we are going to go for agricultural protectionism because it gives construction bonus, where the other one gives, to be honest, they're both really good. Pick one of them. Click it. Public demands rearmament. That is really, really good because it's 150 political power saved. 
just to go from toaster economy to early mobilization. It's a random chance. It can randomly happen. And in this one scenario, it did happen. And we got it. Artillery. Let's go. The rights of man is next. The plan is to work our way towards go with Bren because we need to be in the allies. So therefore, when we capitulate, we can go into exile because otherwise we'll just get pieced out at a peace conference and lose the entirety of our land, which we have a lot of land to lose. Myos, you know what I always do. Production is my favorite. Okay, first of all, we've got political power. We need to get XP. I'm going to go for the offensive guy. Offensive France? Definitely not the historical path for France in 1930s. But now we've got ticking XP, which we'll take advantage of. Disperse industry or concentrated because our industry, mm, you know, it's opposite day. Let's do concentrated. Once again, short term games is better for concentrated. Disperse is for long term games. We are playing a long game here, but we are playing slightly different than usual. I think what I'm going to do is focus on just civilian factories to begin with. And then we'll move on to mills next. We just need to build a base of at least like 30 civilian factories in our colonies. Then later when we take advantage of that, we actually have a proper economy, even though we've not got base in France. Good one is followed by Summit Mixer 2. Yeah, yeah, I've made that joke a million times. You may laugh. The rights of man. And then we can renew foreign policy. We're running out of places to build that's international. So in this case, we'll build inside of Indochina, which is very likely to join Vichy France, then to join Japan. To top that off as well, we'll be queuing mills inside of here. I know these areas are more likely to go to Vichy France, but we can take them back pretty quickly in the war. Be patient. It will all make sense soon. We have renewed foreign policy. Our focus tree has shrunk, and now we are buying time. Political power is a French problem, so silent workhorse to gain a little bit extra political power per day, fixing that disjointed government. It's a very simple mechanic, disjointed government, but I just like it because it's simple. You lose your political power, you have to fix your government. When you fix your government, then you can start doing politics, you know? I like that, you know? I'll let some of the newer focus trees forget that. All right, concentrate is finished now. One of the great thing we can do is build inside of our colonies again, because we now have more building slots. And as I scan across the country here, we actually don't have that many building slots. That really sucks. Okay, I guess we're building in North Africa for mills. We can build a substantial amount in Algeria when we do core it, and we will do that at some point here. But let's fix the government first and go with Britain. Time has been bought. Time is money. Strengthen the government. Right, we've got more civilian factories, so what do we do? Uh, we could build infrastructure in these regions, gaining more steel when the war kicks off. And trust me, steel is something we're going to have to take advantage of. So remember, pray to your strengths as France. You've got a lot of rubber, you've got a lot of aluminium, and quite a decent amount of steel. But be aware, all of this on land is going to disappear, and you're just going to end up with a bit of steel, a bit of chromium, and a tiny little bit of rubber. Are we going to help the Spanish? No. Strengthen the government. Now we can do the Blum Violet Proposal, which makes cause in North Africa, which is useful because when a nation is cored, it has more building slots. Improve machine tools. All right, now we're going to go for the one division trick, proper heritage. Make you do division, and we can make a very large division that consists solely of horses. So if you're not aware, when you go for that focus, that officer core, it allows you to create divisions with horses in them at absolutely no cost. And you get to make a very, very big cavalry division. No, that's a truck. There you go. Horse, horse, more horse. There you go. Make it elite. Elite horse. Make that the garrison. Whoop, the garrison. And then top that off as well, we can change this one division to that big horse. When it's gained all of its strength and exercised to level three, we'll be gaining more substantial XP per day. And top it off is even we break even on the XP that we gain, we get to take advantage of a big horse division as well, which we can later add on MP to, to get the maximum amount of resistance and minimize losses in our colonies. All right, we need stability. So we're gonna go work in conditions. The French care about their workers. Do they though? Mm, do they though? Mm. The balloon, violent, violent, violent protest. Uh, yeah. Uh, lose some stability or political power. We'll go with the political power, actually. So if you're ever below 60 stability and you do something that like is controversial, either signing with the far right or the far left in France, you get the protest event. And uh, the only way of getting rid of it is if you either ban communism or on the left side, you ban fascism. Go with France. 70 day focus to join the allies. Can I just join them? No, you have to be within the world tension for that. Well, that's a reasonable reason to go for that focus now. Let's build an intel agency. Concentrated 2 still. We're going to go straight for concentrated 3. 
And now it gives us access to more building slots where we can build in Syria, more in North Africa, and none in the rest of Africa. Oh, a little bit more here as well. Cue them all up. What's this? You want more army XP? Relief of command. We'll increase that. We are blowing a lot of XP to gain XP here, but it'll make more sense in the long run. See, we're gaining 0, 1, 8, 4 army XP per day for exercising that horse. But as you can see really closely, can you see this? Pay attention. That number is going up. Just not when you're looking at it. Trust me, it makes sense. We have allied with Britain, and we're now in the same faction together. Good. Let's improve the artillery, which we will do. Adding the extra soft attack. Doing exactly what we want. Logistics is king. Supply must be kept as low as possible. Logistics company is next. We're also going to work towards radio as well. Essential radio. Essential for France. Hey, look at this. A motorized division. Now, how do we add soft attack to this? Because you don't want to add regular artillery because the speed is going to drop by 8 kilometers per hour. Now, what you do is you add motorized artillery on. So now we have speed to those boys and to top that off as well. We had a bit of support anti-air as well. Don't have the ability to do that right this second. But when we get the XP, we definitely will do. But the secret to this is to train a bunch of horse divisions, convert them to level three, and then you'll lose less XP. So you won't have to train the expensive division, which is this one for as long. However, when you're training them, you lose all your XP you're getting per day. So 0 0.026. And if you stop training them, 0 0.185. So try your best up to 1938 to not train any divisions and hold on the one division trick. Question is, what do you do now? So this is kind of pointless. Armors purchased the US. It costs political power. You don't have any of it, so it's kind of hard to do. Getting manpower is kind of useful. Uh, I guess fixing the economy is also pretty good too. Ah, a spy. At the same time, we'll improve the spies by going S pills, interrogation, civilian, army department, and then probably move past the defense. Or localized training center is usually a good go to. The Philippines always buys convoys for you, but can never afford them for whatever reason. So you cancel it, and you keep hearing this sound in your ear saying, Oh, they can't trade from you because they've not got enough money. You're like, well, why are you buying if you ain't got the money, bruv? Huh? Press the issue to do with the uh, states in Syria that Turkey wants. No, it's mine. There you go, localized training centers who can hire a, a German spy. Get rid of this guy now and replace him with the German one. Remember, if you go for a spy that's the same nationality as the nation, you gain the intel network 25% faster. And intel network is the reason you go for spies. There's, all the other bonuses are kind of crap, so you just don't want that. You just want the build spy network, which is all about uh, reducing their planning and also reducing their entrenchment by a small marginal amount as well. Promote and entrepreneurship is that a french word am i learning french right now Ugh. the humble appeaser loses war support but gains stability yes stability for france stable france in the 1930s madness and we can hire a spy now that is german we can spy on the germans radio's next logistics companies is next and we can improve the division by adding on logistics and then anti-air myos so the best myo to go for when it comes down to trucks is this left side. This is exclusively trucks on the left. So you either go for a little bit of reliability, which actually is kind of good. But then I also love the hardness ones as well, which, it, which we will take advantage of it when we do at some point go for mechanized. So if you ever want to know if you can have a shortage of equipment, what you do is train a bunch of those divisions. So we'll train eight of them. Then you hop into logistics, you can see what you need the most of, and it is trucks. So in this circumstance, we move loads from here to here, and you get an idea what you need the most of. In that case, you hop back into here, delete those off. Now you can see when you go back what equipment you need the most of. You can adjust it to take advantage of that for the future. I love the Philippines is having trouble keeping up with its payments for convoys. But away, let's expand the citizenship to get a big influx of manpower. Now you're probably thinking, hang on, when you capitulate, you're going to lose all that manpower in the mainland. Oh, I'm touching my nose right now. You can't see it, but you, we will be taking advantage of lots of industry. Trust me and lots of manpower and we don't even need the mainland for that what's this exploits dave what are you thinking about what are you doing <laughs> you will see also the beauty of this one here i see this relief of command not only does it give you xp but it also reduces the cost of advisors hiring for your army you ask what is an army advisor well if you go into your politics it's all this bottom row here you can see look they're all half price they do some anti-communist raids it costs for little 50 political power you lose some stability but you gave a net gain of two stability so you lose 10 to gain 12 does that make sense 
I'm gonna go down the army path. I don't want to do this because I'm gaining mills to give them to Germany. However, I have to do this to progress down the focus tree. I want aggressive focus, and this allows me to hire a more advanced attack guy, army guy, chief of the army guy, which allows us to gain more army XP per day and plus more attack capabilities when the time comes. It is time. Let's train horses. Train six of them. Focus on impassive improvements for my anti-air. Allows my anti-air to not have to worry about air as much. Infrastructure here and here because look at the resource potential. Very high. And yeah, it's because we've run out of places to build internationally. There's an island here. Oh, there's one island here. Yep. We'll build a civilian factory here. There you go. We've found someone else new to build that's overseas. All right. Deploy the boys. Move them all to here. And same again. Exercise to level three. So the army trick now is not really giving me as much bang for our buck than it wants to because the amount of XP we're gaining is too low. Aggressive focus. And we can change our chief of the army. The brilliance of this is, look, the cost of changing that army advice now is dropped by 50%. So now if we change this, look at the cost. It's basically no political power. It's practically a free change. Or support. It's always good to have more of it. We can do radio propaganda to go for that. And then top it off, you can go for partial mobile as well. More economy to not use because we've got nowhere to build. I guess we could build infrastructure everywhere. Do I need to do that? Uh, no, we're not building that. We're not doing that, Dave. Let's not even think about that. We don't need airports. We don't need to fix ATAA. The problem is if we build Fix A, we're giving it to Vichy France that we're later going to go to war with that was going to later use it against us. So no, that's just, just a net loss. I guess what I could do is this building ports here. And the result of that is that when Britain wants to invade Libya, which I will want to invade Libya at some point, it'll put me in a better position. I think we're going to go with 12 divisions in total. So an extra five. Yep. Train them up, deploy them, and then we'll convert them all over to the motorized division that we actually want. Oh no, Germany's said they weren't going to invade and take the Sudan. They're taking the Sudan. Oh no. Historical game indeed. All right, we can switch out this guy now for this guy, but the game is kind of broken, so you have to manually unassign it and then reassign it. And the reason why you have to do that is because the game thinks you're trying to select the same kind of advisor, like trying to stack more than one army offense guy. Like Paradox foresaw an exploit that potentially could come. Paradox, one step ahead of us all the way. All right, we can actually fix our government, which I totally forgot to click this. Once again, it's something we're not really going to take advantage of, but all it allows us to do is max out our stability and uh, stop the loss of political power. Kind of nice that the game let you know that this is something you could select when you can select it. You have to wait like a, a whole full year after strengthen the government before you can click it. So it's something you have to hover over and just be like, oh, can I click it now? Oh no, Germany's taking the Sudan. Where is this leading? Will this cause problems later on? I don't know, maybe, 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 we'll see. I suppose I could do the ports on the other side as well. You know, the big issue here is I feel like I'm helping the other side. Oh, look at that beautiful supply just outside El Amin. Okay, we've got concentrated industry again now, so we can build it in these regions. And it's in, in Central Africa. Oh, look at all the building slots in Africa. Oh, yes, 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 yes. In that case, we'll just finish these little bits of infrastructure and then we'll build everything where we need to build it. There you go. We fixed our disjointed government. The French Republic restored once again. This path was designed for me. So aggressive focus. I'm an aggressive guy. Then we also have battle of maneuver, reducing the cost for mobile warfare. I'll definitely take advantage of that. Then we have cheaper trucks. Definitely take advantage of that. The mechanized models. Yes, yes. Uh, tanks, not so much. Three out of four ain't bad. So now we're focused on all the passive bonuses, guns, artillery, anti-air, and uh, we've maxed out the building slot. So for now, we've got lots of potential to expand. And uh, wow, there's so many options to develop the third world. And then top it off, I guess there's some mills we can queue up there as well. At this point, I don't think we're going to need to have the option to build those ports. Q, Q, Q. All right, we've all trained up. We can convert them to big division now, which is this one. As you can see now, we've lost a, a portion of the XP, but not all of it. And then we can exercise them back up to level three. A little bit behind on trucks, but it's not that too far behind. And then we can focus on motorized. The only downside of this strategy is we're going to be massively lacking fuel, which we'll need to import from other parts of the world. And something we've not got a lot of is convoy. So that's going to later become a problem. But luckily, we can rely on the allies lend leasing as convoy. So that should hopefully take up some of that slack. And there we go. A fully trained army ready to go. So what we want to do is get a general who's fairly new and isn't already assigned to the officer corps. I guess we could hire a new one you know, for this guy. Yep, he'll do. So he's fresh. He's ready to learn. Gonna attach a field marshal onto him too. Gene, he's the guy. What happens is when this guy levels up, we can prime him 
and groom him to become a combined arms dude, which you can see here increases motorized attack and defense and mechanized defense and attack, which adds up in the long run. It's one of those advisors you rarely see in most games because most of the guys games don't start with this guy already available because it's kind of future technology. Motorized and mechanized, that won't catch on, right? Wrong. Okay, the question is, how do we prevent losing our army when Germany capitulates us and Germany invades us? Well, we put it in neutral territory. So in this case, we're going to move everyone to Alexandria and the Suez Canal. Now, when France capitulates, anything that is based abroad will still be under our ownership. In that case, this army, which we've geared beautifully for exile, will still exist and will still be around. Excellent. Stop it off now. I'm going to train a bunch of horses. We just want to artificially make our army size larger. The way we can kind of get around that too, to make an armor really quick that trains at lightning speed is to make a one battalion army. In this case, we'll just make a single horse. We'll get rid of that. Then we'll basically train as many of these as we can. As many as we can, usually a hundred plus usually. As you can see, these guys train at lightning speed. More worker conditions. We only need one stability, but you can go over a hundred stability. So when you're at war and you have a penalty to, to your stability while you're at war, it mitigates some of that penalty. We'll train those guys, then we deploy them, then we assign them, then we convert them all to the big horse. Now this is going to drain a massive amount of manpower. Can you see what I'm doing here? I'm artificially making my army larger to eat into the manpower pools. Ah, I see. Now the situation is, is we're not going to have enough guns to keep maintaining this. But if we can suck the manpower pool dry, completely dry, Therefore, when we delete these divisions, after when we lost our mainland, we've still got all the manpower. So this is kind of a redirect strategy where we're basically saying, oh yeah, we don't actually need manpower on the mainland, but I'm going to train them all on the mainland and then move them to the colonies. And then if something should happen to the mainland, oh look, all the manpower's already been moved over to here. Ah, it all makes sense now. As you can see, I had about one and a half million manpower. What I'm going to do now is deploy them here sign them to here and then basically just deploy them when they become available oh the manpower pool is going to zero now here we go Ninety thousand, and there we go the manpower pool has hit zero there's no poor training anymore convert everyone to the big division so just to recap for anyone's a bit confused what's just happened here i know my fate is germany will invade me and capitulate me and i'm going as a free france path i'm not defending france if anyone hasn't figured that part out yet but what i'm doing is i'm pulling all the manpower from france putting it here knowing that i won't lose these divisions when the war kicks off and then i'll be in a situation where i'll have all the manpower to play with and i'll not have to worry about conscription issues yes july 1939 something bad's about to happen what could it be yeah i have to just spread these guys out a little bit because we're having issues with supply i guess what i could do is add motorized supply and that's going to eat into a few trucks no, end of the day it's not a big deal as you can see, we're having trouble with trains at the moment. We need 74 trains. So we are selling them on the market. So we just get rid of that. And then we don't have as many issues with trains now. The temporary problem. Okay. Germany's declared one Poland in August 1939. Is that early? No, actually, that's just about on time. And then we basically join the war immediately. Oh, what could happen here? And all of a sudden, Germany takes out the Maginot Line. This is completely undefended. Was this intentional? What were they thinking? Anyway, lend lease. We'll accept the lend lease, even though it's something we will not take advantage of anyway. Also, Myos. Myos are a big deal, right? We'll take advantage of those. Do that. Do that. Do that. And do that. Yep, queue them up so I don't have to worry about them ever again. Okay, we're in a situation now. This looks really bad. We're about to lose France. France is about to lose France. The typical French thing to do. And they're going to eat into us. So, th this situation, we're in a bad point because we're going about to lose a bunch of equipment. How do we avoid all our equipment getting lost? Easy. What we basically do is put it all on the market every single piece of it and what we're going to do is put it on at extremely high value so no one's going to actually buy it pop there you go oh no we're having trouble with all of our equipment what a terrible thing however all of our equipment now has been given to the market and we don't no longer have actual ownership of it that means when france falls which inevitably it does is this the end no france hold on you've got a lot to live for oh no and of course, I just because I'm producing more equipment as well, what I'm doing is keep adding them to the market as well. Because to be fair, I don't want to lose any equipment. And how far are we from capitulation? 87%. Remember, I got rid of disjointed government. That's why I've not already capped. 92. We have been defeated. These options here are really cool. If you guys ever want to see me merge with Britain, which is a really wonky, weird strategy where I create this called UK France, 
that even continues after when the war's over, which I think is really bizarre. Look, the UK annexes France. <laughs> what? Is this an a historical thing? Was this ever proposed? Where did this come from? I don't know, but it's really cool anyway. Top one is Vichy France and free France as the fight goes on. And look, our flag has now changed. Charles de Gaulle becomes the leader of France. Resist the armistice. There you go. Boom. France with the uh, kind of strange flag. Anyone got an explanation what this is all about? I don't know. We love God now. Surrendering has brought us closer to God. There are some downsides, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. There are downsides to everything. We lose half of our army because it has to be given to Vichy France. At some point, we might be able to get that back. But for now, we don't have that. But we can delete the entirety right now of our army. And there you go. Half a million manpower. Nice. Top that off as well. We've lost half of our motorized army. Once again, not ideal, not perfect. It is what it is. I'm not happy about it, but it is what it is. Now we go into the market and we basically say, we need everything back. There we go. Now the issue right now is we're losing a lot of convoys due to trade issues. The strange thing about this is our capital city now is this island. And the problem with that is everything has to be shipped in externally. So we end up in a situation where we're building like say here or whatever our mil military factories are. We're shipping it to our capital, then we're shipping it back for supply reasons, and it just eats into a load of convoys. And a bunch of nations want to give us convoys, which I'm very thankful for. Thank you. This is a point where you go to Britain, you're like, Oh, please, Britain, please, can we have convoy? And they give us 30. Thank you. United States, please, can I have convoy? Oh, they won't do it because their world tension is not high enough. America, famously joining late. You get the idea, right? And you could probably do the same with the Raj. And they said no, but Australia's usually got a few convoys. They said no. Malaysia's usually pretty good for it as well. They say no. Okay, we get the gist of it. At the time being, there aren't a lot of convoys to go around. Regardless, it's time for us to take advantage of our artillery. No, that's not true. We're not. We're actually going to look at this brand new focus tree. How often have you seen this focus tree, lads? Be honest with me. In short, bonuses on the right if you need them. Manpower uh, gains you some convoys very useful in this scenario as well as a little bit of air force too when they're at war with the soviet union then you've got the option to retrieve lands from vichy france basically create coups in those regions and bring that land over to you and that's exactly what we're going to do and on the left side you've got the option to get a bunch of bonuses to gain resistance throughout your entire nation and then at the very bottom we have the option to return to france but you can only do that after you've gone back to france so resistance on the left Retrieve territory in the center, and on the right hand side, just a bunch of funky bonuses. So, we're going to work on passive bonuses, uh, industry a little bit, even though we have no industry, but you, you kind of see where this is going. And then at this point, we're going to take advantage of this boyo. Check this out. So, boom, we attack immediately. Soft attacks to the roof. Attack is so strong because the reinforce rate is really high due to the fact that we've got super speed. Actually, what is this speed on this? Yes, 12 kilometers per hour. Nice. Boom, we plow into the front line immediately demolishing these puny Italian divisions and then immediately we'll just swish around to Brook and hopefully try and encircle you as well. Be aware you are pushing into territory here that is hills. You might find yourself in a situation where you're not getting very good attack modifiers but the supply should be good due to this scenario here. Oh and look at that beautiful to Brook. It was French or British all along was it? Top it off. We do that. Grab the airport and that puts us in a better position as well. Keep pinning them in. And the issue here is because we can't push to Brook because it's a mountain and motorized aren't very good in mountains, but we'll still keep pushing anyway. Oh, look at this speed. Trucking to Benghazi. Oh, yeah. Don't want to overextend myself though because I need to make sure we close this off to get supply back. We currently have one factory, one civilian factory, and I think it's this one. Yep, it is. The French Caribbean. So yeah, I told you it was totally worth it to make that one civilian factory there, didn't I? They are currently pinned in place. It doesn't like to brook. It's about to fall. And also this pocket's going to fall as well. Just a tiny little bit micro. Not something I take a lot of advantage of in my videos, but here we go. We're, we're commanding a, a handful of divisions, so why not just take advantage and show it off? We have lost half of our navy as well, so I'll put them on strike force in the Caribbean, move them to Malta. Just prevents naval invasions from happening on top of us because they can gain naval supremacy and then do those naval invasions stay strong stay together and we've lost protected by the Maginot line destroying government and victors of the great war which means now we have the option to go to professional officer course and military theories oh blitzkrieg the battle of maneuver oh i do actually have that oh that sucks so bad we do actually have that 
But because we've lost this focus tree, we don't have access to it anymore. So unfortunately, we're going to have to default back to the normie guy. Yeah, there you go. And then we can go for mobile warfare. And we're going to do the left path because this gives the most organization for motorized and mechanized, which we're taking advantage of if you've not already realized. Have you not already realized? Come on. This is the strat we're going with. And we're going to also start researching mechanized as well. One pocket is down. And the next one, the reinforcements have arrived. Ooh, is this command and conquer? Attacking from every angle here, doing the most amount of damage. Once again, attacking to mountains with motorized is not usually the best thing to do. Hence the reason most games are all around 7-2s. Because with 7-2s, you've got the flexibility to attack most terrain types and not deal with severe pen penalties. But when you're using motorized or tanks, of course, they don't attack very well into mountains, as tanks don't usually do. We'll move them all here. Move to the front line. Apparently, we got intercepted here. Oh, it was a comm line. Never mind. Top it off as well. We can go for the army fence guy. We lose all the advisors. I never realized that. Well, there you go. Don't assign the new advisor that you lose with the focus tree because you're just going to kind of lose them again. Hey, manpower's not a problem. Stability and war support's not a problem. Hey, to say we're a France that has lost, we're still kind of holding on. Right, everyone's in position. We'll do a staff office plan. Supply is not very good, but I'm still going to push anyway and see how far we can get. There's a gap in the north there, so I'll take that. And once again, they're going to excel in the southern regions, you know, the ones that are just deserts. Deserts or plains do so much damage if you're attacking with trucks or attacking, um, in this case, with mechanized, motorized, and armor. Okay, you can see that fuel is ticking down now. So what I'm gonna do is import a little bit of that. I'm gonna get a tiny little bit from the Soviet Union. No, we can't. Oh, it's because we've got no civilian factories, so we can't actively trade for that. All right, but regardless, Benghazi's been secured. Push northward, Benghazi's been taken. Another encirclement and control. Right click just to make sure we push into that region. And that's good. All right, this is a situation where we can just swoosh all the way around to tri Tripoli. Swoosh to Tripoli. Swish. Because of the speed of these divisions, hopefully we can move at speed. A lot of this kind of uh, is self-explanatory. Apart from Dave's terminology of swooshing. So what's happening here is I'm, I'm getting bursts of speed and losing it. It's because I'm getting a little bit of fuel, then I'm losing it and doing that over and over and over again. And now we're in a situation that we're kind of stuck now. We're losing a lot of equipment here. Sad part about this is not a lot you can do. So unfortunately, I'm forced to kind of pull back to this position. And I don't really want to keep pushing because the supply is too bad. I mean, I'm not going to be gaining fuel. I'm going to be losing a lot from attrition. It's just not going to be worth my time. I've got a medal to assign here. Citation. Entrenchment, organization, fuel consumption. Oh, but there's one here that gains extra defense as well. But do I have a lot of defense on motorized? Probably not. Oh, it's fuel consumption and supply. I think I want the supply. All right, we're back into position. We're just going to hold ground for the time being. The Italians keep raiding Malta here and trying to attack my fleet. They're damaging them ever so slightly, but they're losing a lot of their planes. I can't repair though because I've not got any naval dot yards. That's something you probably would have been worthwhile building a few naval dot yards in said regions. Anyway, regardless, appeal to overseas territories to gain some civilian factories. Various parts would have a chance to switch to our side. So this is the catalyst of the historical game where some of these regions I talked about in the start will flip to us. As I said to you, Syria more than likely will do, where Central Africa and West Africa will do too. North Africa, not so much. And Indochina, not so much as well. When we have control of Syria, that's where we built all the civilian factories. So with that, we can build a port in this region. Therefore, we've got an opportunity to push towards Tripoli. Oh, what is happening here? Ooh, hello. Ah, oh, but there's no port they've got access to here. I was thinking maybe a landing, but without access to port, this is kind of pointless until they just keep doing this. Raiding Malta, damage sustained, nothing. Losing 20 planes, not wise. And again, Indochina remains with Vichy. So now they're all going to necessarily flip depending on where they want to go. Also got the option to save a spy, so I'll do that now. Syria remains with Vichy. Oh my goodness, we're not having much luck here. The chances are percentage flips. We don't have a lot of control over which ones flip to where. And by the looks of things, the way things are going, it doesn't look like we're going to get anything. Central Africa stays with Vichy. Oh my goodness, this is really bad luck. Western Africa stays with Vichy. Okay, I think this is just a percentage roll. Okay, let's go for the interventions one because we have the option to spend political power to try and make these areas rise up. I'm not sure how effective they're going to be. By the looks of things, everything's going to slip, say, with Vichy. Okay, we get Madagascar. You know the land that we didn't actually invest anything into? Yeah, thanks for that. North Africa remains with Vichy as it always does. So the biggest issue we're going to run into now is we have no civilian infrastructure to build ports to advance supply in these regions. Let's hire the elusive gentleman. 
We're going to go total mobilization and we're going to go extensive conscription. It just means we have to worry, worry less about consumer goods. However, even though we don't have access to the mainland, we still have this issue with worker issues. So we can fix that, but not as a part of this focus tree. But luckily, we don't have any military factories, so we don't actually losing any actual factory output. We can't get people in the factories because the factories are owned by the Germans. This makes no sense. Oh, and Malta has been struck again. We've got an interesting mechanic here. We have the option to hire exiled leaders. So these have an attack bonus against the nation that exiled us, which in this case is Germany. I wonder if it's actually worthwhile to hire these guys. This guy is an infantry leader too, so we could naturally make him combined arms. Oh, I think this is the guy. This is the way forward. When it comes down to exiled countries, you have a legitimacy number, and this gives certain bonuses depending on the level of legitimacy. This applies to the nation that's hosted your exile, in this case, the UK. So I'm not even sure how effective these bonuses even are. But regardless, we've got 100% legitimacy. Why? Because we're fighting the Germans. And therefore, we gain lots of legitimacy for doing that. Alternatively, you can hit a button that's lobby for support or something. I wouldn't recommend it. It costs a lot of political power. And it only gives you a very small amount of legitimacy. But to top that off as well, you can start doing these bonuses as well. Recruitable population minus 50%. I suppose it's good to get rid of that, I suppose. Anyway, intervention in Syria. So what you can do is promise them independence. And as a 30% chance to defect to our nation... There's also an option to prepare a coup in Syria, which requires an operation by spies, which at the moment is bugged and doesn't work. It is what it is. And then finally, invasion of Syria. Starts a border war between Jordan and you. Let's do that one. Is this something we potentially could win? I don't know, but Britain's actually moving troops here. And... Oh, okay. And they win. Allies have secured Syria. And we have access to loads of civilian factories now. Oh, look at this. Oh my goodness, that's what I wanted all along. Well, border conflicts. I used to say they were rubbish, but they actually are okay. There you go. They have redeemed themselves. So I suppose the next thing would be is what's the next border conflict to do? Would we do one against Central Africa? Sure. But there's a chance that the UK could lose. So it feels like you are relying on RNG again. As you can see now, they've got maximum compliance and low resistance too. And we're on local autonomy. Good. The more compliance you've got, the more access you have to factories within this region. Hence the reason why that's a good thing to do. All right, let's get the lads on the front line. Go for Tripoli. Need to build planning bonus. Going to do a staff office plan to build planning bonus super quick. And the port is about to finish. And it has three, two, one. Boom, here we go. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh my goodness, you blink and you miss it. Just keep going, lads. You're murdering them. Oh, we go for combined arms expert. Yes. He's perfectly good with horses, and he's also perfectly good with mechanized and motorized as well. Oh, absolutely annihilating them. So we've gone for the Central African thing. Can we do an invasion? So that's a border conflict with Chad. Do it. And we secure it immediately. Nice. Factory count up to 14. More civilian factories. Oh, the economy is looking so good. The only downside, we have no mills because we built all of our mills in North Africa. Let's do uh, North Africa, I suppose. Ah, okay. You look really closely here. Some of them say, look, invasion in West Africa. But some of them just don't say that. So you don't have the ability to yoink North Africa. And I suppose Indochina, you've not got the option to yoink it as well. Oh, no, you do. Invasion in Indochina. Let's do West Africa next, though. And now we've got the ability to import oil. We only need probably about two of those. Two? No, three, maybe? Keeping an eye on this number in the top left. And there you go. The number's shooting up now. So that's perfect. And there you go. Africa is secured for the African French. I almost have just said the Africans then. It's not the Africans. Oh, we could declare war on Vichy France now. I don't know the catalyst for this. But at some point, Vichy France creates some world tension. So you have the ability to justify on them. And in this case, I am going to do that because I need North Africa. Yeah, we've got some mills now. Mills. So now kind of want to spread everyone out we'll go here supply here is abysmal though doctrines so mobile warfare this is giving us more speed and recovery rate and then org and then org and then org and then we've got the option for manpower or improved tanks but right, the justification is complete but i want to see if i can do the border conflict in west africa first just so i can grab it and not have to worry about fighting in that region of the world Scroll the way down. Invade West Africa. 
and it doesn't immediately flip but there is a border conflict happening and britain's absolutely demolishing the vichy french boom west africa's mine and this had a few civilian factors in it good next up we're going to declare and invade north africa and immediately we're just going to go in grab the ports and then we've got supply and then we've locked them east to west to the center east and west sec good and then there's the last port here we can grab that Oh, they're uh, moving a lot of troops into this region. They've kind of locked this region down as well. Britain, where are you? I need you right now. We can grab the West Africa, though. We can consolidate all in the north. It looks like the axes have arrived now, so I feel I'm overextended. So it, there's a big fear right now that I could get encircled, so I need to pull back. Yeah, I am. We'll focus on this front line. It looks like they've locked them in. Oh, wow, that was quick. Turn around, go back. <laughs> where are we even going? West or east? What's a bit difficult about this is because, because it's not clear at the start of the war where all the divisions are, I kind of need to rush the victory points and the supply depots and then secure them. But then there's a chance if Italy or Germany reinforces with their own troops, then I'll be in a really bad way. So that's the reason why I was kind of like, well, I attack here because it's easier and weaker, but now I'm moving here in that scenario too. And there we go. West Africa's secure now. Done. I guess we want to get into position here, do a staff office plan spy has been captured so i'm immediately going to save that spy put them into italy and then we'll attack now because we've got the max planning there we go africa secured is it all of africa oh just a little bit down here and that's it now we have access to mills but we need to be very careful with the mills because we need to make sure we allocate all of our production equally last push not the real french get out of here fake french we've got a few mile bonuses see that little arrow here Click it and see what bonuses are. Soft attack for artillery, definitely worth. And also defense for guns. Not as worth, but I'll do it anyway. Focusing on the motorized and we need a little bit of rubber. We're not going to import that though. Don't need as much oil now as well. So we'll get two lots left and we can just keep banking it. I feel like we're in a good position now. And now we've got excess political power. We can start adding out medals. If they've got two citations, I'll just spread them out. One for each. One for fuel reduction and one for supply reduction. Cut that off as well. I've just realized too, I should be improving my logistics as well. Get that supply as low as it can go. Okay, is Africa done? No, Italy's holding on. Uh, they were. All right, 38 factories. Progress. Let's do an intervention into Indochina. I'm really curious to see if we could do a border conflict here, what difference it's going to make. I'm super curious. How many divisions has Vichy France got now? 14 to 45. Okay, they're not doing that bad. All right. Can I do a naval invasion? Where would we go? We'd grab Sardinia. But remember, doing a naval invasion here with trucks. So this is not a good naval invasion. If you look at the stats for that, here we are. Naval invasion penalty 23%. I'm not good. And the initial penalty is probably about 80%. So your end damage is only doing about 5%. End of the day, you're not doing a lot of damage. All right. We're in a position now where we can make mills. We well, should do it. Mills, mills, mills. There we go. Cue them up. Build them in North Africa. Oh, and Britain's already landed. But will they hold? Ooh, doesn't look like it. Okay, denied. We're in a good position here. We're, we're in exile. We have good production, which is rare. We have awesome manpower, which is rare. We have good stability. We have political power. We've got the ability to fight. This is all looking good for us. The war support, I'll take it. Once again, I want to spend my decisions. There's no point sitting on that political power. It's pointless. You need to spend it. Unless there's something you are saving up for. Oh, boom. Naval invasion. Can we do it? Is it possible? So we're never going to land here because this is the penalty is too big. Look at the penalty. The penalty is 94%. And then this penalty is also 94%. No, we're not landing here. Press H. Turn back home. Cancel the order. Then go from here. And unfortunately, we've lost a bunch of motorized from that as well. Oh, the damage. You can see the strength on these divisions. Yep, low, low, low. So what happened is that they had some submarines here and they intercepted the convoys. And that means a portion of the division was obliterated. Now, unfortunately, the net result of that is I've lost a bunch of motorized. We can rebuild, I believe. And meanwhile, Britain's landed again. The downside of these tanks and motorized divisions is I feel like they hit really hard on the right terrain. But if they're not fighting on the right terrain, they just do no damage. You've got a little bit of XP, naval XP. Naval refits worth it. Because that carrier has seen better days. This carrier is currently at 43% strength. It's a floating wreck. Meanwhile, Italians trying to claim Lebanon. Not happening, lads. Even brought camels as well. They came prepared. Denied. 
and start to queue up some mills in West Africa as well. You know, in most games, the UK gets accused of not helping, you know, but in this game, they're doing everything they can. All right, these naval invasions aren't working. Sardinia failed twice. Corsica looks like it's going to fail again. But hey, they're trying, all right? I want to make it some mechanized. Lots of hardness, lots of defense. I'm going to sign a Mayo too. Oh, hang on. That was, a, that was an armored car. Mistakes happened. I don't usually do this, but if you go into logistics, you can get rid of old equipment that you're not using. I'm never going to use these light tanks, so I'm going to get rid of them. Strategic bombers, never going to use them. Scout planes is one of them. I'll get rid of them. At least I've created a more cleaner logistics here, you know? One thing you can do for mechanized as well, get rid of that so I never click it again. We uh, drop production costs by a massive amount. I think it's 50% uh, if you go for all of four, five points. But four is also a big reduction too. Now you can really kick out those mechanized from eight production costs down to 4.8. I mean, come on, that's totally worth it. 50% reduction in cost. Well, in this case, less than 50%, but almost 50% is definitely worth it. All right, we've got the option now for invasion of Indochina. I can't do it because France does control a bit of land here. I think I'll help the Brits out by building a port here. Build a railway between it. Yeah, go, go, go. The only way I can do an invasion of Indochina, which is the border conflict, is if they control nothing. But right now, it looks like they're doing really well, so keep at it, lads. It's a bit of a step too far because I don't need it right now, but I'm going to switch one to mechanize, and this will ease our truck shortage problem. Because remember, we need less trucks now and more mechanized, even though we are behind on mechanized, but we will catch up. Oh, and all of a sudden, Vichy France just handed this to Japan, and then all the divisions are now in exile and have to leave. This is how the game was intentionally played, boys. Oh, but we can, now we can do the invasion of Indochina is a border conflict that's happening here can we take it back <laughs> this is gonna be so broken yes guys this is how the game was intended to be played so we're waiting for japanese then we oh they it says that they hold it even though they lost the border conflict come on come on once again everything in this game is working as intended i just realized i developed the tip of down here for free i guess i love the japanese who doesn't love japan type one in the chat if you love japan so now we've got the Mayo that reduces the cost. Then we increase it further to 30. And now the production cost now is more than 50% cheaper. Of course, you do take a reliability hit for that. However, it's worth it in the long run. Okay, another naval invasion, I believe this time. We're going to go here, and then here, and then here. We've got the option here for two military factories, manpower, free fires, and free convoys. Nah. We have the option to gain stability and war support because we're over 90 legitimacy. Do it. That maxes out as 100 war support and 100 stability. Remember, we're in exile. So that's pretty good numbers to say where we are, you know. Let's see if we can select this option. So we can prepare a coup in Indochina. And then we've got the option to prepare the coup, which appears as an operation. I think I have to have control of Japan for that. We can also propose independence to Indu China. I don't think this is going to work because this only means pulling land from Indu, pulling land from Vichy France and added it to regular France. And because it's controlled by Japan now, I don't think a lot of these mechanics even work anymore. It's insane to say that I've got a fully working industry right now, even though I don't control any of my mainland. You think that's insane? More mechanized. United States to join the war and naval invasion time. Let's go. It looks like the southern port is empty which is just perfect. Okay, well, Sardinia has been occupied now. And then Corsica's taken as well. Boom, got him. What's the next one? We're going to go from here into Sicily. Another op option for a citation, so I'll take advantage of that. We'll go for that one. Top it off, I feel like I need to do naval invasion support because I realize I've just lost a few convoys, which means I've lost a bunch of crooks and mechanized. Controlling the seas is actually surprisingly harder than I expected. Form the committee got max war support but not max stability because we've reached the ceiling on that next up we're going to get some free off map mills we have the option to train some more divisions we're just a little bit behind in trucks and mechanized so i think i'm going to do it as long as we're prioritizing these as the main ones and these in reserve that means equipment will be fed into the divisions for fighting capabilities first before being fed into training as long as it's set up like that everything will go smoothly Okay, Brazil joined the war. United States has joined the war. We've got a Barbarossa situation going on. Ooh, I can't tell if they're losing ground or gaining ground, but they've pushed a little bit in Ukraine and that's it so far. Oh, that's cute. We've got concentrated four now, so we have the option to build our first mill on Chromium Island, our capital city, and also a little bit more in the Caribbean too and Suriname. Logistics three, we can go recon too because we've got recon on our divisions for attack capabilities. Are there any decent... 
tactics we can do. We can get Blitzkrieg, I believe. Elastic defense, delay, unexpected thrust. I think Blitzkrieg's on this right side. Oh, we can get it here. So if you're not familiar with tactics, there's a random chance that whenever you're in battle, a tactics are deployed, which could have attack or defense capabilities or could slow down your opponent. And you could set a preferred tactic here. This is something you're interested in. I've selected unexpected thrust as my preferred tactic. It means there's a 25% chance of having that tactic to happen in battle. It's kind of the super meta, and some people in multiplayer don't even take advantage of that meta either. They forget they're even there. And I'm on the fence how effective they are actually are in the real world. All right, now we go for the focuses that uh, cause more resistance to happen in mainland France. Become a thorn in the side for Mr. H. And of course, keep switching the division towards mechanized. This increases the hardness, means the amount of damage they could do to this division is more limited due to the fact that hardness, hard attack, is something that's harder to come by of a soft attack but you can go one step further and do you know how you do that mechanized two which has more hardness 70 percent from 63 naval invasion is it doable it is sardinia is on my radar okay we're gonna have a drop in the south i'm gonna slow the game speed down so when we land we can initially push into regions and could and form a strong beachhead but initially we break in in the north here that's really good we land then I'm going to push northwards to get a surround on this port. End of the day, the long-term objective is to grab ports. Because that's how we get supply into this region. And we haven't got unlimited supply. I think I'm going to change the heart. I think I'm more likely to secure the western flank over the eastern one. I think at the moment, it does look like we might take some losses here. But it's looking pretty good to secure the west. Yeah, it is. I think we've got the west now. And we've landed. And all the divisions on this region. And we're closing down really quickly. And then we've secured Sicily. It's secured, and I know it's secured, because we've got access to a port and get supply in here. So now we're in a position where we can build planning bonus and then start another offensive. And top it off as well, we can assign another medal. You can have the Org medal, the Elite Six. We do have another four divisions that have been training. However, I can only deploy them to this island here. Once again, this has got to be a bug because that's not working as intended. You should be able to deploy in the capital of the nation in exile. That's how it used to work. So you deploy into London. It doesn't make no sense actually deploy to the other side of the world. It does not make sense. All right, counter attack. We're going to go here. Then we're going to go here. And that should lock them in. That is so beautiful. That could have not gone any better. However, breaking the straight is next to impossible due to the 99% attack penalty. Meanwhile, we're going to cause issues to happen now in Savoy. Nowhere else. I don't want to do that. I'll do the other ones first. Hey, we can go for the high command now. Combined arms. Do it. And then we can hire the combined arms specialist, which will level up higher and higher as the game progresses. As we get to level 6, he will do 10% damage. And then at level 8, he'll do 15. Getting a general to level 8, though, is very difficult. All right, the solution to this is to just go around the outside. Meanwhile, it's really landing behind us. Oh, no, actually, it was France. This guy's really interesting. Look at him. So this guy is an exiled leader, which gains attack bonus and defense bonuses against nations that annex them, which is Italy and Germany. Amazing, right? And then go one step further. He's got 10 skill into supply consumption, 25% reduction. That's just a coincidence, because I never intended that to be the case. Then, of course, he's also a combined arms hero. He's a hero. Bad news. The fleet got wiped out. Time to go even harder. Harder than we've ever gone before. Hardness is now 45%. I think we can go a full hard division now. We've got so much mechanized. Yeah, let's do it. When you've gone harder than you've ever gone before. And that has a hardness of 57%. Recon 1 is followed by Recon 2 and then followed by Recon 3. And go for the passive bonuses. So right now the industry is pretty good. We have a total of 33 civilian factories for our nation in exile. Which once again is just so awesome if you think about it. We're losing uh, Indu China to China. Oh, it makes sense. China gets China. All right, the boys have arrived now. I'll assign them onto the naval invasion as well. Don't get intercepted in the med. Good. Arrive. Naval invasion will be complete on 52 days, but we do not have any naval supremacy in the Adriatic, which is in this region. So that means I'm going to have to reset the naval invasion order. Otherwise, that's just never going to work. I need to go for something like this so that way it never enters the Adriatic. Mechanized 2 is complete. And then to top that off as well, I could modify it. But at the time being, we've got such a backlog of mechanized. I'll just make fresh with the full production cost. And then if we do get the XP later on, we can always add that on uh, to drop the cost down by half or more. So we've got civilian factories now, but we have nothing to spend them on because we've run out of building slots. 
There are some emergency building slot buttons here, like I can build one in Tunisia. Sure. I don't think it's worth the political part. It's one of the desperate things. It's one of those plain tall mechanics that I never really take advantage of. Here's a strategy. Build infrastructure, because each layer of infrastructure adds 1.5k of fuel capacity. So therefore, you could bank fuel, then not have to worry about constantly importing, exporting. It's a bit of a reach strap. I suppose it's viable if you have nothing else to spend your production points on. And here we are going through all these focuses. So adds resistance, adds resistance, reduces compliance, resistance, resistance. It's all same old, same old. Just causes a problem in Germany. Well, German France. Wink, wink. Oh, the Brits are pushing out. And my naval invasion is nowhere near ready. Okay, so this is a common problem a lot of people run into in Hoi. They've run out, you've run out of convoys, and it's because a lot of it's come from trade. And like, trade means lend lease. So the question is, where is the lend lease coming from? So if you go F4, like we're near your capital city, you can see there's import export routes happening. And there's probably one to New Zealand and Australia. No. And no, so that's not the case. I presume it's these blue lines here. So this blue line goes all the way to the United States and they've not got a land lease with them either. Alternatively, what you can do is click on the market, click on diplomacy, then click on open country list, click on then the allies. And then you can see the ones here that have land lease and see this Raj here. Is it the Raj that's causing this bottleneck? It looks like it canceled that. And there you go, we've got some convoys. It looks like we're struggling with convoys regardless. So I'm probably gonna have to get a few convoys from Britain. Convoys. Yeah, it's 15. Also convoys. Yeah, we've suddenly lost a massive amount of convoys. I think the most of the convoys are being assigned to this naval invasion order. By the looks of things, this naval invasion's never even gonna happen because yeah, this is absolutely pointless waiting for this now. Okay, we're just gonna get involved in the, uh, the invasion of Italy. Get everyone here, head off over. I'm going to do a staff office plan to get the planning bonus up and then just go. Oh, the damage we're doing now is huge. I really don't like this mechanized though. Look at how ugly it is with the open top thingy. Uh, not a fan. It's just not pretty. Supply seems to be bottlenecked here. So we're going to have to build ports in this region. One of the issues the AI has, it's like it doesn't detect like, well, maybe we should prioritize supply in this said region because this is the main area where we supply problems. And I'm having, to, I'm having to forcefully reverse here to help the AI out. Ideally, we want to be grabbing here and then grabbing here to grab this port. Because once again, supply here is atrocious. Go here, go here, go here. Staff off this plan. One, two, three, four. How many citations have you got? Three. Wow. Big lad. More org. Three, two, one. Off you go. We have to break two medium tank divisions for Italy, but we've managed to do it. There you go. Break through here. And then we've got port now. So we are, should be alleviated for supply and everything will be going great now. Of course, the north here, as you can see, has got mainly got planes, so you can just very quickly connect all the front line up there. And the Italians have landed behind us. Nice. More issues with reducing resistance. Well, reducing resistance, increasing resistance for the Germans. Germany has reintegrated Alsace Lorraine. They have gained a core. This, the bastards, it isn't over. Why do I get an event for that? Italians doing a really good job of uh, maintaining naval supremacy of the Mediterranean here because they're in a really good position to give the Allies a really hard time. Meanwhile, I'm just trying to push back here and clear them up. I looks at things, they've lost quite a lot of divisions too. This should be very close to a civil war as well now. We need Britain and America to really pull their finger out here. Their naval dominance of the Mediterranean is failing massively. Hence the reason why these naval invasions are coming so thick and fast. <laughs> these borders. I've never seen borders this bad before. Okay, Chile's just joined the common turn and then declared war on Japan. Does that mean the Soviet Union is at war with Japan? Potentially in the future they will. The National Council of Resistance, which does the same thing as before, just increases resistance and drops compliance in France. It feels not very interactive doesn't it you know like you just well, you're hitting buttons to increase resistance and drop compliance you know i don't really feel like i'm playing the game and being involved in the game you know it's just like oh, well just a whack-a-mole game of increasing numbers so therefore it gives them more of a hard time okay we're breaking them down here even though we're pushing into mountains so you probably think i'm struggling but i'm doing okay because they're unable to do that much damage to me their heart attack numbers are so low they can't get through my how unbelievably hard i am yeah so i am mentioning hardness on this video way too many times but unfortunately this is the mechanic we're dealing with right now okay looks like we're gonna break the south we just need the allies and to push the north there we go and then we'll push the other side even though the damage will be low due to the naval penalty and pop there we go all right we're in a really good position now ideally i want one guy to go here and then one guy 
to go here. Let's get another staff office plan. We're in position, boys. Go. And then we'll make an encirclement in the center. I do this like every video. This is not like a new strategy. This is the most normie strategy possible. They're going to supply me with 0 0.5 convoys. Thanks, Bryn. How about you give me a full convoy? And they're like, no. All right, the break has happened. We push all the way to Rome. It's going Rome, boys. Rome has to be secured by the free French forces. Once again, the most historical game. And there we go. Secured, locked in, beaten, bruised, battered. Grab Valencia. Go, go, go. Oh my goodness, that could have not gone any better. How many divisions has Italy got now? 55 to 59. Learn to withdraw forces from there of the front lines here. Impending civil war. And I don't think I got the puppet nation. No, I did. Oh, no, I did. I just don't have the pop-up saying, do you want to transfer the land over? I wonder why. Deposed, deposed, deposed. Back to civil war. All right, we are so done now. Oh, this is really good. This is actually something to work towards. So what this does is whenever you capture a state, any liberated state, you will gain three weak divisions. It's really good. It's a nice way of building momentum. It's a shame that this focus isn't somewhere higher up here and it would actually feel more like you're playing a game as a free France and you're trying to liberate to give you an incentive to try and do naval age to grab land to try and gather divisions but this comes so late it kind of feels a bit pointless okay, one of the issues we run into right now is we need so much so many more guns so we're gonna have to just try and change our priorities and we have to go back to a little bit of motorized too just to balance the divisions out otherwise I don't want the divisions to drop too low on specific feel bits of production so in summary, I'm, I'm, I'm yapping. I do feel I'm yapping. Is that, see the strength number, the orange bar on the left-hand side. If this drops below, it means you can project less of these stats into the actual battles. And that means your effectiveness in those battles drops significantly as well. So what I'm doing is by switching out from motorized, which I've got a big stockpile of, well, from mechanized to motorized, I'll be in a situation where I'll be a little bit more equipped to actually fight these kind of battles. All right, go, 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 lads. Go, go, go. Now we're pushing into Vichy France, which is technically real France, proper France. Now the spies can go into Germany. And top it off, we can also become a spy master, which gives us another four spies. Trying to break the big river in the south of France here. So I'm making more smaller, precise offensives here. Let's see if I can make ground. It looks like the weak spots are always the German divisions. The French divisions are actually pretty good. And there we go, we made a break over the river. We've got access to a port. Oh, and Vichy is in sight. What a prize. Grabbing Vichy off the Vichy French. In that circumstance, I'm just going to move my front lines over. Get everyone into position. And then make an offensive from the other side of the front line. Because breaking that river is not going to work. So in this case, if I can go around it, it won't matter. There you go, combined arms. And could I recruit more mechanized i think the issue is the lack of guns at the moment i think we could probably get another two once again deploying them from the island into the pacific is becoming a bit of a chore maybe at this point i'll have access to my capital soon we're very close to paris okay move everyone from the east to west we want to get our home territory back there you go F french forces of the interior now we have access to three new divisions these divisions cannot be deleted are you joking me paradox why okay well i guess they're just gonna sit there for the time being I could have swore when the last time I played this. Oh, you can delete them. Sorry, they thought they, they were in circle. You delete them, and then you gain a bunch of guns back and a bunch of manpower back, so it's, like, super worth it. I'm going to narrow the front line, because remember, we've not got that many divisions. I can't get over that he's got 10 into logistics, but I prioritize bold attack. Just a coincidence. Just the way the di dice rolled, gentlemen. Bunch of new divisions have formed. I might as well just add the divisions on, right? No, that's the better strategy. You can just convert them all over. And now we just need artillery and mechanized. In that case, we just do the same thing we did before. We'll downgrade them to a few more motorized. Need a bit more artillery, so I'll import that. We need a bit of tungsten to keep the economy up. A bit more rubber as well. Launch another offensive in the center. You see, we're artificially making our army bigger now by the, the liberated forces that we're getting. Once again, that mechanic is so good. It's just a shame that it comes so late in the game. Paris! It's here! Boom. We're home, lads. And Vichy France has capped. Which is good. Vichy France has some good divisions. Remember those divisions that were mine once upon a time? Oh, we've gained a whole new army now. From all the divisions we've just liberated. Grab one of our best dudes. Charles de Gaulle. I've heard he did some good things. Go here. Go here. And then a field marshal front line. And off you go. Now, 
Oh, we can go up for this. Nat national Uprising increases capture ratio by 35% and out of supply grace for 90 days. You know what? I'll just do that just to capture a bunch of equipment. That'd just be funny. I'm going to change our laws from export to limited exports so we can focus on steel. I don't want to have to import more resources than I need to. So this is the division that we're gaining. So what I could do is just add on support artillery just to give it a little bit of extra bite. I need a little bit of fuel now. So United States, give me fuel. Give me fuel. Give me fire. Give me that which I desire. Oh, baby. Mechanized offensive. Blitz has been enabled now. Do the Blitzkrieg. The French Blitzkrieg of liberated France. Yes. Britain, can you give us land that is technically ours? This is our core territory. Why have you not given us this? Guess we'll have to get this in the peace conference afterwards. So, how are things going? France becoming liberated. Also, we've liberated Italy under French occupation. The revenge of taking our land. And Britain somehow is like, no, this is our land now. We've had it, held it for so many years, now it's ours. Meanwhile, they never really took out Yugoslavia. They managed to take Greece somewhat. And then we have the Soviet counterattack pushing through the Balkans here. So they historically did. And they've got their first tip of German land by grabbing East Prussia. German situation is looking pretty dire. Meanwhile, we've managed to close the pocket east and west now. Get to counterattack. And this limits the amount of divisions for Germany massively. I'm going to make the front line narrow in the north so I avoid hitting the Maginot. More free divisions. Playing the spy whack-a-mole game here as they get unassigned because I occupy the land and I'm to reassign them over and over and over again. Is this fun? Am I having fun? Dave's gone full auto mode. Battle plans for the win. If they ever remove battle plans from Hoi 4, I'd hate this game. The fact I get the choice between microing and having personal control and then having the ability to just completely lean back and let the game do its own thing is really cool. I like the fact that those two options exist at the same time makes Hoi 4 a perfect game. You have to agree, guys. Come on, you have to agree. That's what makes Hoi so good, in my own humble opinion. Bunch of more liberated troops. Another full army's worth. Everyone on the front. Staff office plan for the entirety of that army. Well, oh, this is going to be a brutal counterattack now. One. Aggressive for everyone. Off you go. Oh, what a perfect break. Just keep going. And we can do the final focus, which is technically form the provisional government, which just basically means is I'm becoming regular France again. I don't know why I have to wait 70 days for this. 70 days to become who I really was all along. Also, remember... I'm going back into core territory here, meaning that I have an attack on core territory. So when I landed into France here, I was doing a lot of damage, not only based on the fact that this is an exiled general. Oh, he's not exiled anymore. Get the icon here, he's gone now. But he was an exiled general. And he's also level six, meaning he's got 10 into attack for mechanized motorized, which is very useful. You know, I'm just not going to attack the marginal line. We'll go for the heart. Run out of manpower. Don't know how that's happened, but we'll go service by requirement. It might be the resistance that's causing that problem. Yeah, it might be. It's nice to see 100% compliance everywhere, though. It's weird. I started the game with, like, eight divisions. They was with my, my backbone and my army with uh, motorized attack, which was awesome, too. It was really great to see how effective they were in North Africa. And now I've got three full armies just based upon all the liberated troops. Once again, that focus, this one, is so amazing. It needs to be higher up the focus tree. Oh, they missed a really good opportunity there because that is such a good focus. Form a provisional govern. Is there a provision of it's my main... Focus tree? Hang on a minute. All the focuses are reset. Can I go the fascist path? <laughs> I don't think this is meant to happen. Yeah, we still have the worker shortage. I guess we could fix that by going down the French Union path. The Treaty of Baghdad. What is this? Oh, Japan collapsed. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. This is the worst timeline. We have a North Korea. <laughs> Oh, the Soviets did declare war on Japan because they've taken a chunk of them. The timeline where Japan fell first. So this doesn't usually happen as well. Like Romania, Hungary, Slovakia have fallen first. Oh, we have China in Europe. Okay. It's definitely opposite day. It's very unusual. You see Germany, the last one holding on. 99%. And for some reason, I have to reclaim my own territory. And also Alsace-Lorraine. This is what France should have done. Got some spoils from the war. Meanwhile, meanwhile, in Italy, we have Kaiserreich. And they're all communists. Ugh. Let's do my least favorite focus for France, which probably has one that I believe has the most potential, but it gets lost in RNG world. So let's pray to RNGs and see if we can core 
our colonial empire. Also, France didn't think they got enough from the war. So and not only do we get the two Sicilies, but we also get Rome as well, which is nice. And, oh, and also uh, we get uh, North Africa as well, which is also nice. Boom, here we go. The French Union. So colonial overseas possessions have an option for a referendum to either join France, which means I core it, which is mad OP, or they get unrest for the rest of the game that you can never get rid of because they eventually want to declare independence. So Syria is no. Even though I built up Syria so much, it makes no sense. Central Africa votes to join. Oh, okay. That's good. Uh, West Africa says no, even though I developed that one. North Africa votes to leave, even though I technically half caught it. Hmm. But we got Central Africa, so I technically should be thankful. And if you ever want to play this strategy, which I would never recommend it because it's too RNG based, now for the rest of the game, you're going to have to make all these colonial holdings uh, have martial law because otherwise they'll get to 100% resistance and rebel. But I suppose if they could rebel, you could annex them again. Then technically they could indefinitely rebel. So martial law permanently for the rest of the game. France, but not quite as you remember it. It'd be kind of cool if things you occupied have the option to join like this west germany bit of the offer to join and uh this part of italy would that'd be kind of cool right spontaneously just referendum forever never end them just keep doing referendums until you win right 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 i can relate to that as a brit hey if you enjoy my kind of content and you want early access you can do that by becoming a member see the join button next to subscribe you can hit that and get access to multiple videos that are currently in the pipeline but you can watch them significantly earlier maybe even months earlier Aren't you lucky? And if your name is on the screen right now, you're one of the elite. I love you. Apart from that, lads, go touch some grass. I love you. Bye-bye.